Is everybody uh, good to go? Ready to go? Awesome. I'm excited everybody's here. We're going to have a good time. Let's do it. Whenever you're ready, Lawrence. Yeah, can we get a, a quick little free Shake vibe? It up. Yeah. And look at the Aries doesn't want to clap because he's an asshole, right? Here we go. <laughs> he's just doing his thing. He's just like... doing his Aries thing. All right. We're well, going to respect it. Exactly. Of course you do. Well, on that note, <laughs> On that note, we're rolling. It's that time. We're back in the building. You're here with Reckless Hype. It's your boy, Jiggy. I'm excited to have you guys join me today. I have a very special guest. Can we bow? We do bows on this side. I have Rayma here today with me. Do we do Mango, Rayma, or what do we do? Like, what's the... Can we go Mango? What's so it, the... So, it's, it's Rahma. Okay, Rahma. 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 It's hard. Yeah, I can do it, though. Rahma. Yeah, he got it. Okay, cool. I got <laughs> so, it. So, I don't, I don't call myself Mango in, like, real life. It's mm -hmm. more like an internet thing, like... Just see, like that personality on the internet, you see, know? See, look, and I feel that 1,000% because Cameron is my name, right. but Jiggy is who I am. We actually, um, when I met her, she was like, uh, I said, I'm Cam, nice to meet you. She was like, your name's not Jiggy? And I was like, fuck, I should have <laughs> just, I should have just ran with it, but should've we're good. With Jiggy. Yeah, just good. Jiggy, we're going to do J Jiggy and I like Mango. Both. That's it. I That's like both names. I think they're sick. If I upset you at any point, like my mother, you no. can just be like Cameron. What? You know, like assertive. No, yeah. I'm not going to act like uh, your mother. See, look, I mean, shit, you know, <laughs> Some some women try to do that, so Whoa. you can never be. Uh, Whoa, this you is can never, turning left yeah, real see, quick. Look, no, this is just hey, the, the this is reckless hype. We're gonna get reckless to some extent. I told you, I told her though. You did I was that. like, I was like, this is my this is my wholesome episode. For those that do know, um, there is a switch, and tonight I plan on keeping it off um, to some extent. But here we go. I'm excited to be here today. Um, Mango just came out with an amazing EP that I am an extreme fan of. It's called Mercy. Make sure you go check, check that out. out and stream that no kizzy um and we're gonna talk about that so much but initially i just want to ask you how are you feeling that's such a that's such a um you know relief in that sense but it's also um such a big moment of just letting that thing go into the world how do you feel right. today it is a big moment yeah it's like one of those things where it's just like a moment so i'm trying mm -hmm. to like embrace that moment as much as possible like stay present be yeah. grateful yeah because i feel like a lot of times people put shit out and then they're like what's the next move and mm -hmm. i'm like no i gotta like keep it keep it like down to earth and just yeah. be like appreciative of this moment it's my first project like it's nothing big I, i'm an independent artist so exactly like, for me i'm just chilling like yeah I'm just trying to take it in and be like thank you everyone for just being yeah. here yeah you know? yeah i love that though that's... also i saw you on my zoom listening party yeah we was out here we was out here i'm, I'm a fan that's the one thing you know that's... i was like he's real like he's he's at my digital listening party. You know what I'm And like, that's some yeah. dorky shit. Listen, like. listen. <laughs> hey, I'm about what I say about it. I'm not new to it. I'm true to it. If I'm going to do it, I'm a fan of your music. But I'm um, grateful that you're a fan. Yeah, I'm no. a fan of you, the way you talk. I was like, we, we had a conversation on the phone. Sorry. No, <laughs> hey, this is your show. I tried telling her before we started this. I was like, you're the star. She's like, no, I'm not. But go ahead. Go ahead. So, so we're together. I was saying like, we were on the phone and like you were asking me questions like just to get like a brief introduction like at that time when we were talking on the phone. Yeah. And I was like, wow, he's a great conversationist. I was like, oh, probably because he does this shit like for a living. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that makes sense. That's real. I was like, you're, you have a great energy. I was, no, I was thank just, you. I was like, cool. He I knows really, what he's doing. I really appreciate that. No, that's that's super important though just because i feel like you know when you're getting to know somebody especially in this space but just in general you're like very much the same yeah it's like you have to make sure that the people that come and join you are just like i can't just you know turn this on when i'm doing reckless right, right. i try to pride myself on being somebody that regardless of the situation whether it's a 75 year old asian man or you know 10 year old you know um you know Hispanic young boy, there's no difference in how I got to be able to connect with the two. The same way with music, I'd imagine there's no one demographic. Like for a who universal your for. personality. Exactly, which is easier said than done. Definitely. You know, so. But that's awesome. Okay, so we talked about how you felt in that side of things. I love that you talk about being in the moment because that's something that I struggle with a lot is, you know, working on being present. I saw something, I heard something. It says, if you can be in a moment, you can hear it you can smell it mm -hmm. you can feel it mm -hmm. and you can what's the last one you can touch it right whatever it is and you can't always do those things especially in the pandemic again you know six feet we, we got hand sanitizer on deck um but uh then you know you're in that moment right but the second it's over it's so easy to lose it right how do you how do you find yourself being able to stay in the moment stay grounded like exactly that. definitely be close to the people who i love mm -hmm. like that helps and just my mother really whoops my ass like if i 
go up here. Oh, like, I felt that. You know, like if I like go even like a little bit above mm-hmm. than what she's I, like, hey. she's like, girl, I brought you up. Like, yeah, you know? like, so like, yeah. she's like, calm down, mm-hmm. like don't do that. Mm-hmm. So for me, like it's just about staying close to the people who know me. For me, mm-hmm. for example, my I was gonna say we got two people you love right here. Do we want to shout them out real quick? Yeah. We gonna talk to them. Elise actually lives with my sister, and okay. that's my best friend, Angels. Angels, what's up, Angels? And, and Elise that's my best friend, Elise. She's a filmmaker, and she's wow. doing immigration law. So wow, which is not an easy thing to do. They're doing great. Yeah, that's awesome. And they're both Virgos, so you know how we feel about Virgos. We happy, love Virgos. happy Virgo season. Happy um, Virgo season. Leos are officially out of here. We will not <laughs> fucking miss y'all. What? Um, I no, fuck with Leos. Absolutely. Yeah, because you're a dark fire sign too, but we'll get there eventually. Um, shout out to the Virgos. I love y'all. You know what time it is. You know what? Shout out Tara, my best friend. She's a Leo. I love Leos, so put See, some look, respect on it. All right. My mother's a Leo, and I'm out here talking shit. But <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. Okay, that's awesome. I'm happy to have you. I got so much that I want to touch bases with you. The first thing that I want to talk about and allow your, my listeners, but also your fans of what you do to get to know a little bit of your backstory. Okay. So um, I hate that question of like, who, who are you, right? So maybe we'll do specifics. All right. Um, <laughs> you want to talk about maybe your, your ethnicity and a, maybe a little bit about how much that plays in a role of who you are today? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm Pakistani American, mm-hmm. so I try to hold that down. Like as yeah. an artist, I feel like I didn't really see a lot of representation as a kid, like growing up. Is there? Zayn Malik. <laughs> okay. Oh, Zayn. Okay, he's pretty fucking big. He's, so he's half Pakistani. Does he rep it though? Uh, I don't. I don't know. He can. Is bro, <laughs> was he One Direction? Is that correct? Yeah, he's he was part of One Direction. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like I. Oh, he went solo. Yeah. Okay. That's He's the one right. who broke up the. Yeah, band. he was like, listen, all that, all that white. I'm not gonna stuff. say that though, because Angels is here and she really loves that. Oh, okay, look, we'll keep that on the low. But okay, keep going. I'm sorry. No, you're good. So like, it was one of those things where I was like always striving to do that in my music, just like represent the fact that I am Pakistani. Mm-hmm. You know, just that culture. Yeah. Part. Yeah. And um, I don't necessarily, I'm not the best. Like, I wouldn't be like considered like a a good representation of what it means to be Pakistani. So I don't like to like act like I am that for people. But what is a good representation? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Like I'm, but I can't say that I'm the right representation. Mm. You know, I just kind of own it. Like knowing that I am Pakistani, I was brought up that way. So maybe if you could relate to it, you could relate to it. If you yeah. can't, then you can't. So, you know? be it. Yeah. so I'm just here, like just trying to own it for myself, not mm-hmm. for like anybody else. Yeah. You know? No, that makes, that makes absolute sense. And I mean, not to, not to try to counter what you said, but I think it's it's beautiful that like in the music you make or just the person you are, at the end of the day, it's what you are, right? So mm-hmm. if people love who you are, they love the music, they love a fan, then they gotta love the the person in which you are. And if that's right. a part of it, then uh, subconsciously, you know, they're supporting it. Right. Um, okay, so family, you talked about mom being a big part of that. How much is what you've been raised upon? And, you know, the because one of the things we talked about on the phone is there is a lot of, um, you know, morality and there's certain expectations that come within that culture. Right. You know, I feel like any person of color, whether you're Mexican or Hispanic, whether you're African-American, you know, or, you know, in your case, there's different... Um, what do you call it? Social cues and certain right. things about that ethnicity that are specific. What about those things have been challenging for you as being an artist, especially an independent artist? It's right. not like you're signed to Interscope right. yet or anything. That's you know? funny that you say that. But yeah. like, I think. <laughs> like, you got something to tell? No, <laughs> no okay. I'm not. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, but it's like funny that you say that because like I do really love Interscope. Um, but mm. I was talking about. The fact that like when you grow up in a Pakistani culture, obviously it does have a little bit more of a traditional sense to like how they bring up the children. Like, oh, you should put education first. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, but like music isn't really a realistic option. Yeah. Like growing up, I was always like, yeah, I'm gonna be a lawyer. Like, I'm gonna be a lawyer. Mm-hmm. But like in my heart, I was just like, I wish I could do music. Like, yeah. All I did was watch musicians like yeah. didn't watch like disney movies like i would just watch michael jackson on youtube like you know what i mean like, yeah it was one of those things that i was so like involved with that i just wanted it to be part of my life but i felt like i couldn't reach it but honestly came to a point where like i knew i wanted to do it at a certain age and mm-hmm. i was like mama baba i'm gonna do this yeah like, i i don't know what to tell you like i can do school and music like mm-hmm. i'm gonna be able to and they were like at first hesitant because obviously culturally like singers like women singers Mm -hmm. and like women artists performers Mm -hmm. like that's not necessarily accepted but when i got that acceptance from my parents and they were like you know what you can do it both because they knew i wasn't gonna stop yeah i told you on the phone i was Mm -hmm. like this bitch ain't gonna stop like she's Mm -hmm. i have to support her at this point yeah that's how my parents were they're like okay it's inevitable 
Like yeah. she's gonna do this no matter what. Yeah, and you <laughs> and you've done you've done an amazing job. And I'm doing it. Far. Yeah, you're doing <laughs> and it. And I'll do it again. Talk your shit. No, I think that's that's a great point. Just because, um, you know, when you have aspirations, um, you know, regardless of your circumstances, there's a hesitation of self. So then to have, you know, your family have to, like, support yeah. support it, 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 it helps in so many ways. I'm grateful. Shout out to my parents, too. You know, and Yo, just shout out to way. his parents. Hey, likewise, though. We're out here. Shout out Baba. He's doing his thing. <laughs> um, no cap. Yeah, I think that's I think that's really big. This might sound um, kind of radical, but one of the things that I've always been curious about is um, Middle Eastern America and the culture that comes within that. Have you ever seen the show Rami? Um, yes. You've seen it. I'm actually not Middle Eastern. So, so, um, yeah, stay, stay with me for a second. I, I promise you, I'm I not, you. yeah, I'm not staying with it. But just the, <laughs> the, the Islam and the Muslim culture as a whole, right. right? And understanding it for what it is. Rami actually helped with a lot of that. So if you have not seen that, go watch it on Hulu. Basically what it is, though. It's a dope show, though. It's a dope show because what it does, do you know what ethnicity he is? I think he's Persian. He's Persian? Okay. Wait, I don't want to say that. Yeah, see, look, see, look. And, and I'm going to be honest, it, it's hard for me personally to decipher between. Rami um, Yusuf, right? Rami Yusuf, yeah, the show on Hulu. We'll look into it. We have a stats guy somewhere. Egyptian, we'll, maybe? We'll find it. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I'll yeah. Google it. But anyway, can we edit that? <laughs> yeah, like, can we get some other guy telling people on the show? Look, um, there, I say to say it's a great show just because it shows his perspective of growing up in America right. and being in his mid to early, mid to late 20s. Yeah. And doing the all diaspora the diaspora people. Yeah, like doing all the things that, according to his um, his family standards or his ethnicity, that he cannot do, like have sex, like, like uh, drink alcohol, like smoke weed, do right. all these things that are considered rebellion. Right. Um, which is so interesting because to a lot of us we assume oh i can do this so then everybody in america has the freedom to no yeah, yeah, it yeah. doesn't work that way so it taught me a lot in that sense of opening my eyes and i'm just i was super excited to have you on here to find out how you decipher between the two you know especially as you're in your early 20s looking to figure this shit out right. your life is really about to change sporadically right you know musically but also who you are as a person so yeah i know. definitely did grow up muslim so everything mm -hmm. was super conservative and traditional in that sense I don't have any like um, disrespect towards a religion or anything, but yeah. I personally like when I grew up, like I just didn't really attach myself to a religion. Like mm -hmm. for me, that just wasn't it. But mm -hmm. my mother is still very like in tune with her religion, and my dad as well. Like, and I respect that because it's it's important. Like people mm -hmm. just want to have faith in something in this exactly. life. Exactly. So I'm like, why would I? Why would I act like that's not okay? That's not possible. For me for though, me. like it's yeah. just I'm spiritual in a sense, but mm -hmm. like I just kind of just again just try to be the best person I can. And that's all you can do. He's going to be so mad. I'm about to call out Gerald. And that reminds me of a conversation that I had with him because he's just, he's been in such a space where he's just always been the most right. progressive person I know, taking one W and then two L's happen, but then three W's happen. And I asked him, I asked him, I said, what about where you're at right now is allowing you to be in this space? And what he said to me, exactly what you said of just knowing that ultimately, like not everybody has to be holy and think that God rules everything that we're doing right now, but just knowing that he's there and that ultimately we have a purpose mm -hmm. right and that I doesn't you, you know that doesn't have to be through religion that can be through what you feel in manifestations or it can be whatever you see fit as your and purpose and god doesn't even have to be a person at all you know in that you sense you have to personify it yeah just yeah. like something to a higher power to mm -hmm. look forward to you know i agree i agree yeah. okay Cool. Well, um, seems some, like you get along with an Aries. Yeah, look, no, no, we ain't. See, look, we're almost there. Don't get there yet. <laughs> On some less serious shit, because we got deep for a second, but I enjoyed that. Um, let's talk about some light stuff. What's your favorite color? Um, fuck. Gotta have a favorite color. Like, I, when I ask this question, and then the one that pisses me off when people say black, black is not your fucking favorite color. It might be your favorite color to wear, which is okay. Your favorite color is not black. It's He's not mad. a color. It's a shade. <laughs> I'm sorry. Clearly, I'm not a fan of that. You know? I love that you're so defensive over one yeah, color. Yeah, because I have a favorite color. And What's I your favorite color? My favorite color is green. In and out. Reckless height. I, I reckless. fuck with green. You she fuck loves with green? green. Mint look, green. No I know your color. I'm your best friend. See, look. Pastel. <laughs> what do you say? Paint her face pastel. Well, yeah. well, go ahead. What we got? What my favorite color? Yeah, I have story. no idea right now. All right. Well, let's let's talk about it. Let's help you get a favorite color. Is there like? Is I tried to deny pink seen? when I was a kid. Yeah, because it's was, so girly. I was like, oh, I don't like pink. Mm -hmm. Like I used to fight for my life with that shit. Damn. Like, chill, dude. 12. <laughs> Anyways, I like, I think I like purple. That's a good color. That's a good color. I, I used to be one of my favorite colors, too. I think it's I uh, it's subtle, too, in some ways, because there's different shades of purple um, to some extent. So I respect that. You should really 
consider getting your favorite color. You know, you know, maybe your next album cover will have your favorite color and in some incorporated. But work lavender work on that. See shit. Like I'll even take that. It's not really, you know, I'm talking rainbow colors, but it is what it is. Lavender okay. is a rainbow color. It's a shade of purple. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. I'll, yeah. t- I'll accept that. We'll, we'll accept lavender. Is that cool? Okay. Um, I asked you on the phone yesterday, but I want to put you, I want to put people on. What's your favorite food or your favorite dish? Oh, fuck yes. I yeah. love these kind of questions. Let's get to it. Biryani. Biryani, can you... Traditional can you, Pakistani dish. Yes. A uh, lot of spices, a lot of rice. Go crazy. You can have it with shrimp. You can have it with chicken. Wow. You can have it with beef. Um, whatever. There's like certain locations where like in India and Pakistan where like it tastes better. Mm-hmm. Or like... Damn. Or like there's... It's like regional. There's like Hyderabadi biryani. I don't know. There's so many different kinds of biryanis. Like, yeah. It's such a diverse dish. Do we do we need to? I need to this? put you on. I yeah, I was gonna say. Do we need to go somewhere? Yes, I'll We're, refer you. Yeah, refer us. Put us on. I put will. us on because I, I think we need to do that, and we'll have like a little segment where we actually film it and we, we shout out. We I shout would out love that. For doing I would that. love to watch. You, you're gonna have to come with us. I we we'll have a mukbang. Yeah, let's do it. Do you know what a mukbang is? No. <laughs> so like, there's like a. <laughs> let's do it. Fuck it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there's a Korean. I'm down. He's like, yes. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. There's a Korean broadcast where they like eat food. Like, wow, they just eat food and they yeah. enjoy it because eat, sharing food is like a real pleasure. I'm just saying, it's very intimate, yeah. it's very intimate. You think about that, like, especially yeah. if you prepare a meal for somebody. Like, if I have you in my home and I'm preparing a meal for you, don't consider that slight, you know, right? Elise like, is like that, you know, like, She's and it's because like it's made with love, we're it's not love language, it. you know, we're not. It is. Do you, do you know your love languages? Um, it's got to be words of affirmation because we're both good at that, it has to be. It is. What else? Physical touch. All right, we got to pause there for a sec. Because people whose love language is physical touch, I don't know necessarily what that means. Only because, like, there obviously is a distinct difference between physically touching somebody for oh. comfort. And then, like, can can you physically touch a dog and that makes you feel okay? No, like, actually, I don't think it's physical boundaries? touch. I think I just lied. Well, I mean, now that I explained it, you're kind of like, Yeah, oh. I'm like, I don't think. Oh, acts of service is number one. That's for sure. Me too. Acts of service, words of affirmation, and I hate gifts so not that nah yeah fuck that fuck, that. fuck gifts bro <laughs> Damn. We don't fuck with gifts. We, have, we actually have a we had a gift for her inside in the bag, but you did fuck that gift. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was it? it? You feel me? Like I might give it to Elise. Like fuck this shit. <laughs> fuck the gifts. Uh, okay. No, I I like. <laughs> Yeah, make sure we get that to at some point. Maybe we'll have her deny uh, it or not. But, okay, I think those are good, too. Stick with those two. Those are my two, too. Yeah. And we found ourselves giving each other words of affirmation. And obviously, this is an act of service. You know, we know each other very mildly. And here we are doing each other an extreme service because right. this is beautiful. Okay. Um, last but certainly not least, for allow them to get to know you before we get into a little bit more about the album and that. Yeah. Is you accidentally decided to be born in a- April. You know, it was Baba and, and Mom's, you know, situation, whatever the way it went. Um, <laughs> and that, that makes you an Aries. You know, that makes you an Aries, which which in some cases is extremely unfortunate because if I were to be extremely honest and blunt, which you know I have zero problem with if you're watching this, um... The Aries is on the bottom barrel of my list. Like, I'm talking, like, sign 12, maybe 11. You know, Nick is agreeing with Cancer's me, like, like mine. No, nah, you're capping. You're I'm capping. not. You can well, ask anybody. I well, hate Cancer. If, if that's the case, I can respect that. You know why? Because we don't fuck with each other. Like, there is yeah. nothing about what yeah. we do. We're different sides of the spectrum. Yeah. How about you do your best to describe an Aries, and I'll talk about what the hell I don't like about it, and then I'll do the same for us. God! Yeah, no, this I feel is about, vulnerable. This is, this is about to get pretty heated. Like, I'm not going to yeah, it's, it's reckless. That's um, it. Aries are like very independent, uh, bad bitches. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Talk your shit, because Aries they're are like, for sure not shy. They're definitely confident and leaders. Um, I don't know. Mm-hmm. They're just like. There's just people like vibing, like. <laughs> and as and as and as Raymond said, she's a she's a developed Aries, whatever the fuck that means. That means like a mature, like mm. acknowledges mm-hmm. where I'm. Yeah, lacking. all that, all that. All okay, that. let's hear it from you, then. Yeah, no, no, what no, does no. the cancer do? Like, no cap. Yeah, well, you know what we do. First of all, we're they like to say we're emotional, but you know what I substitute that for passionate. I don't say things I say that manipulate. I don't mean. No, I'm just <laughs> Why is that always the word? <laughs> 
Kai, is that not the word? There's a TikTok where they say manipulative. You know what it is? You know what it is? Is that people mistake emotionality. That's not a word, but we're going to make it a word. Um, That's it, funny. My sound engineer, Corey, is always like professionality. It's yeah, not a word, yeah, but we're going to make yeah. it a word. But you know what? If you say things with a... Enough? With a, with a, confidence? Yeah. And then then it's a word. You know what they'll do? They'll believe it, which then may come across as what? Manipulation. Hey, it, no, is, I think you it guys, is what it is. Think, like, fuck. I think sorry. cancers use their emotion. Good. I think cancers use their emotions to their advantage. Mm. I'm going I'm to uh, take a take sip. Take a sip on it, yeah. yeah. Think about it. Let me know how you feel. <laughs> Do um, you feel that way? I plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very well said. That's very well said. And I think, obviously, look at this. You guys are fire signs, correct? Right. We're water signs. Right. You know, what, what do you put a fire out with? Water. Didn't yeah, that. yeah, Not a fire. yeah. You said what? Not a fire. See, look, and here the Aries comes to defend the other Aries. You know, like Water that's. Just makes it worse. The, the, I fuck with you. See, look, yeah, I'm sure. Okay, let's see if we can be somewhat friends. What is your moon and rising? I'm a Leo rising and a Libra moon. <laughs> that's so dark. I'm a Libra moon. It gets worse. You have two fire signs. I'm all fire. Like I'm all fire, earth, and water. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Air. Not water. You I don't wish, have you wish any water. water in me. Clearly. <laughs> nah, real shit though. Real shit though, because water signs have like there's a sense of personality, but there's a bit of sensitives, and we're just fucking reckless and fun. Like so we, I don't have personality. Absolutely not. Remember, you're developed Aries. You're developed Aries. No, no, no. no. I'm not saying. I'm. I'm disagreeing with that statement. Oh, you're, oh, oh. Okay. You I was like, me? whoa. She was like, Hold on. I'm, about I'm to get the fuck <laughs> out of here. No, you're developed Aries, and that's why you know we definitely see eye to eye in that right. sense. But um, I think Aries as a whole, and they are cool people. Let me be very clear. I think Aries is honestly a top three creative sign. Like every Aries I know is passionate. They're go-getter. They're independent. They're just stubborn. They also find ways to neglect other people's ideas, and they tend to diminish it. I would say me. so too. You know, like yeah. That's, I mean, I feel like every sign has like a good and a bad. I, I of res- course. I do love certain cancers. Like, yeah. I don't necessarily like cancer men, but you know, I love <laughs> cancer women. They're incredible. They're. It's usually the opposite. It's usually the opposite. Really? Yeah, it really is in most cases, but no. Cancer I, I, women, I have a special place for them, mm, but like mm. cancer men, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But like, I feel like you're We're a cool- an acquired taste. Yeah, like yeah. I definitely think that I could see why cancer men are cool for, mm-hmm. for certain water signs and air signs. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. We don't have to talk about like Zodiac that much. Yeah, we're a little, we're a little deep. We're deep. <laughs> we're deep in it. No, that's good though. I love that. I, I'm What I'm not a fan of is how the word manipulative keeps coming up. Okay. Know? I don't know you personally like that, yeah, you know, like yeah, that deep. Yeah. We're just going to change the subject because there's a few people watching that are going to be like, what? <laughs> no, no, but that's, that's real. That's real. I enjoy that. And that's actually, that was one of the bases of our friendship is like, and you know, people love to shit on astrology, but the extent to which I see it is, and I'll continue to say this for the rest in my episodes is that I like to look at it as a basis of law of attraction. Right. right. It allows you the opportunity to feel um, a closeness or an understanding of somebody that you absolutely don't know. Right? right. So like obviously I just met your friends but they're very good so off top I'm attached to them. You on the other hand we had to grow to be attached. You know. It is what it is. So that's the way. He like hates me but, but like no, won't secretly, say No secretly. You know that's what we do. I'm manipulating. Uh, we'll see which way it goes. Whoa. No. Like, <laughs> I gotta walk out. I gotta go. <laughs> Alright let's talk about the EP. <laughs> We'll leave astrology alone. I maybe might need to sub this for my episode. Um, but yeah, Mercy the EP, such a such a beautiful project. It's six songs. Thank you. Is that correct? Right. Um, what I personally love about EPs, I had my last guest, uh, Cole Knox. Shout out to my brothers, Double Vision, him and Raph Ryushi. Make sure you go stream that. Um, they they originally came out with an EP a year ago and then evolved to this last album. The EP we talked about on the phone is so special because it's a compact, concise piece of work that ultimately has um, intention and purpose in every song just because it's so, so small. Right. You know, what about your process and where you've been at said that, okay, I'm going to go ahead and make this an EP rather Mm -hmm. than trying to sit on it for a year and all of a sudden, you know, it's been six months, I'm on six songs and I still got four more to go. You know, what was the the EP vision on that? Like the intention. Yeah, behind doing that. Right. I mean, honestly, I wasn't like, oh, I want to make an album. And Mm -hmm. I wasn't even like, I want to make an EP. What happened was my producer, Hasib, Shout out Hasib. Y'all said, what's his name? You got to shout him out twice. Hasib the Few on Instagram, on Twitter, his website, HasibTheFew.com. No cap. (laughs) Um, check him out. He's a great. He's also a South Asian American rapper and producer. So. Get busy. 
Yeah, right. Yeah. So he's doing great as well. Um, well, I reached out to him. I like slid in his DMs on Twitter, wow. and I not like that though. No, no, I like, think that's like, you're no, right. I know, but I said it weird. <laughs> no, you didn't though. I'm saying I'm acknowledging because the DMs. I mean, technically, I slid. The DMs are a beautiful place if it's used correctly. Right. It's like. It's also a way to just get in contact with people, with people who are doing the same know. thing. Yeah. yeah. So I I just slid into the DMs. I was like, yo, your mask off challenge was sick. Like, do you want to make a song together? And then he was like, yeah, hop in the studio. And then he was at <laughs> pa- <laughs> hey, he was at Paramount Recording Studios, and he invited me to his session. And okay. Then chill. I just I just hit a verse on like his not a verse. I think I like made a melody and a chorus. Yes, I made a melody and a chorus on his song Play Love, which is on his growth album. Wow. And he like was just like, yo, you're sick. Like you had such good chemistry in the studio with the sound engineer and me. Like I think we could really make a cool project together. And I was like, you know what, let's do it. Like yeah. why not? Like sure, I'm seventeen, like I don't I don't I wanna get my music started like This is a while back. Yeah, this yeah. is a while back. And he was like, Yeah, like I would like to make like a little short project with you just to see like how it goes and I was like, Okay, let's do it and yeah. so that was this project, like Mercy. Like we wow. developed the vision and like we just So he, he executive produced and did the whole thing. Mm-hmm. He's a big deal. He's yeah. a big deal in that sense. He produced it alongside Nino Beige, shout out Nino. Yeah. You guys should follow Nino. So check for Nino Beige. I think that's what Nino it is. Beige. He might have to come on here and rock with me. He's really cool. Like yeah. he's hustling. Is he cooler than you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an Aries. <laughs> All right, we'll find out what he is because anything is honestly. No, I'm right. just kidding. You know, sick though. Like he's, he's super talented. What What is that like? What is that dynamic of that process? Because, you know, I also want to really quickly too is like, um, tell me about the sound that you produce because I I have a vision of what the genre is, but I want to hear it from you personally of right. like because it's it's and what's beautiful is it's not just one thing. Mm-hmm. You know, so how would you describe your sound and what the Mercy album? I think it's like. like at a crossroads between like R and B, like soul, and like because the vocals are very R and B. Hundred percent. Like you know, I'm like, and then yeah. the the beats are like a little bit more hip hop, boom bap. Wow. Okay. You know, so I feel like I'm at a crossroads here where I'm trying to just like pick from both, kind of like. Um, what are some artists? Uh, like Lauren Hill kind of does mm. that. I'm not saying I'm Lauren Hill, but like sh- I definitely yeah. have been inspired by like. Yeah the things Lauren Hill SZA does that like yeah. those kinds of things and also a little bit of pop sprinkled in yeah you got a you got a pop joint on there which one is it Hitless yeah Hitless I told you I was like this is definitely going to be on Power 1 6 in a few months um, oh but, that's so nice <laughs> but yeah clearly I don't hate you yeah right I'm out here like fuck no. um, I'm grateful for that thank you yeah no no question I definitely would say correct me if I'm wrong I also feel hints of like a little bit of Indian alternative you know it's yeah. like just in that sense especially Lavender because that's right. Something, something that you hear, like that playlist I sent you to get lost of just like that sound of like, I feel like when I hear you, I want to be outside. I want to yeah. sit and I want to feel nature. You know, shout out to all the homies in Oregon. I want to I want to be surrounded, kind of like you are in the video, just twirling. Right, right, right. Like this, you know? Definitely people will like listen to Lavender and be like, oh, it's kind of gives me like Frank Ocean nostalgic vibes, mm. like that kind of. In- yeah, you should own that. I want to, but yeah. I don't know if I should. No, nah, like, yeah, grow into it. Let it be inspiration. You need to listen to Alina Baraz, too. Yeah, I love I you. think of her when I hear you. Oh, yeah. I love her. She's yeah. so talented. And she's so bad. She's a bad bitch. She's so bad. She's if you cool. don't listen to Alina Baraz, you don't like music. I'm just going to let you know. You know? <laughs> Did you like um, her last album? Oh, so, ah, uh, yeah. You don't uh, like it? It, was, it wasn't her best work. But that, that's the dark thing about music, and you'll feel this, and you're probably going to be fighting this standard, too. If you love that artist, chances are you loved him from the beginning. And then you set a standard, right, of what they is, and you're like, ah, this isn't the old shit. And she's amazing, but, like, the album's previously just untouchable. But her sound, I'll forever crave. Um, that's that definitely going to happen to everybody. It is, though, right? Yeah. And that's, like, it doesn't have to be a dark process, but that's what's the difficult part of being an artist is you're constantly fighting to live your best work. We were talking about Rihanna. How did everyone was like, oh, she's a comeback. Have you heard Anti before? Like, have you literally listened to that? Like, how do you just go back in the studio and be like, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and, and, you know, recreate this and do this? There's a standard. The yeah. same for, you know, um, I love uh, Blonde. that album. So yeah, much. Anti? Yeah. Favorite song on it? Probably consideration with SZA. Consideration. And also, is Bitch Better Have My Money on that album? No, fuck no. Correct? Incorrect, Gerald? Bitch Better Have My Money? That's my national anthem. Anti, it's on there? Wow. It's my national anthem. You're, you are right. 
That's on there? Bitch better have my money? I don't know. Well, no, you see, we are, we are a statistician. <laughs> Come back to us. Yeah, no, great sound, great I think, sound. I think music is subjective. So, like, wow. you're obviously going to have a different opinion than the next person. And yeah. that's because it all depends on where you're at and how you feel mm-hmm. and what you're going through. Yeah. What you can relate to, what you can't relate to. So, at that rate, it's like, you know, I respect that you might not like certain songs and you yeah. might like some other songs more. Criticism and all that, I feel like you got to just, like, take it with, like, a... Grain of salt. Right. And then yeah. use that to, like, constructively work on your own crap, but then, like... Do yeah. what you want to do at the end. Yeah, of the day, that's you know? beautifully said. That's beautifully said. What would you attest to? That's a perfect question. Transition into looking at Mercy the EP. What are some of the inspirations? The criticism is there? Like, is there any heartbreak involved? Is there mm-hmm. any like self realization? Is there right. like what are the things like the central points of what the album was inspired by? Right. I mean, like there were so many things happening at at once in the past two years for me mm. personally. Also within this own year for everybody. Yeah, like, dark, dark. We shit. talked about that. So yeah, I want to touch on that. It was difficult. Um. A lot of heartbreak, a lot of identity issues, a lot of growth within my own life. Like, I, I talked about, like, the little spiel that you read about the Mercy EP. It's like, this is basically just a project about a rebellious-ass, like, brown girl who's going through, like, love, identity, like, growth, and her narrative of all those things, you know? So I'm just talking about the things that I went through. Like, mm-hmm. and you, when you hear it in the music, like, I don't really have to, like, say it, you know? Because, mm-hmm. like, you hear the lyrics and you're like, oh, I, I know what she's going through. Mm-hmm. And can relate to it. And that's right. easier said than done. I do want to talk about it. We touched on the phone of you talking about being a brown girl and some of the um, burdens that you initially as a child may have thought that came with it. Right. But as you've been able to grow into who you are, just right. understand the beauty, the power that comes with that. Mm-hmm. How much confidence has that given you? Um, it gave you know. me so much confidence. Yeah. I, I, was ta- I was telling you, like, growing up in white majority areas when you're, like, a kid and you're, like, a little bit darker than it's everyone else, age. have a little bit different hair, like, maybe some bug teeth, um, <laughs> you're not going <laughs> to necessarily feel like you belong in that situation. Of course, you know? how could you? And I told you, like, the black women that were in the music industry is what I looked up to and mm. admired, and they are the ones who let me stop internalizing. Mm-hmm. Beyonce, like, you know... Like, all yeah. of these beautiful artists were, like, yeah. flourishing Alicia within their Keys, own uh, communities. Exactly. exactly. And I was like, okay, like, I need to do that for myself, too. Like, I need to, if I'm going to make music especially, I need to own my identity. Mm-hmm. And I need to admit, like, that I had those self-love issues as well, like, as a mm-hmm. kid growing up. So now it was just, like, one of those things where I was like, I'm going to be confident in where I come from and who I am and how loud I am and how obnoxious and annoying I can be. Because <laughs> at that rate, it's like... Embrace this Yeah, who shit. cares? Like, yeah. If I don't put myself out there, nobody will. How are you? So. How are you? Okay, um, and that's beautiful. That's beautiful in every extent. I do want to touch on I'm so excited about this point because ultimately, who you are as an artist is beautiful. I was telling your friends that like, if your song, if your music was like mediocre and I thought you were a dope person, that'd be one thing, but then just to hear the sound and know that there's so much talent and potential it feels good but there was an extra layer of what you did that this to this ep that i've just been bragging about that was so amazing um the fact one that you were able to have the idea of having a virtual listening party i'm not gonna lie when i initially had copped the ticket for a listening party I thought she was out here risking it all. I thought it was a limited number. We're going to pull up with the mask. There's going to be hand sanitizer. We're going to be in a room listening to it. (laughs) And I was down for it. Or even if I wasn't going to go, I still wanted to support and buy a ticket. Right. But once I was able to realize that it was a virtual listening party, I was like, one, this is the product of innovation. So I'm going to support that. But two, you went an unbelievable, um, you know, extensive route of using a platform that you had via your music to create the tickets being donated towards a Black Lives Matter cause. What was the, what was the cause? It was the Black Immigrant Collective. The Black Immigrant Collective. I want you to tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, it does have to do with Black Lives Matter. Yeah, Obviously, of course, of that course. That shit's relevant right yeah. now. So for me, like, I was like, I was like, I want to meet the intersection between blackness and immigration. So I was like, what kind of grassroots collective can I like donate to or like maybe help raise money for? So I was like, this this is perfect. My older sister, she's she's the one who really inspired me in my political sphere Mm. and my my justice, more social justice and my Mm -hmm. advocacy for those things. And she really inspired me. She's like, check out this website, like look through what you want to see, like what you want to donate to. And I was like, this one. So this wow. is like a Minnesota-led like organization. It's 
the intersection ties to George Floyd yeah. to some extent. Right. I mean, if, if, even if it's not like directly tied to American politics, it's still for me like I'm defending people that are n- the black people across the sea as well. Mm-hmm. Like it's not just about America. And I think that I'm gonna say something political. Please do. But I think that like that is something that people forget, especially within this upcoming election. They neglect the people who are not in America. Wow. And that kind of ethnocentric viewpoint in politics is harmful. Wow. And I really think that it it's going to harm people overseas. Yeah. And so for that reason, I was like, I'm really passionate about helping those people right now. Mm. So for me, I was like, yeah, this is what I need to do. So they. The Black Immigrant Collective, they help, like, defend and help the immigrants, like, come through. and like, Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Just one that your mind is there from that standpoint. And I just, like, I think Thank it's you. also really inspiring just because, like, so much of what having a platform is, especially in the entertainment industry, creative, musically, is to have a platform that you can leverage yourself, right? right? It's very rare that you come across, especially people like us in the early stages of what we're doing, that want to use their platform to help other people. People, right right so for your mind to be there that was like all right i'm sold i don't give a fuck what she sounds like i'm gonna support this and then i heard lavender and i was like oh she's good too okay <laughs> maybe i'll look past the fact that she's an aries but no and in and, 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 and all seriousness no but I, I really do love that because i feel like there is there's a real connection and you yeah. the song mercy you were telling me was literally, you know, you were in a place of darkness where you're like, listen, the world is so fucked right now. There's so much hate going on. I don't feel right or feel like I have the privilege to release music. But you then got to a spot where you were like, I'm going to use my platform and my sound to create this song that then became the motivation and the drive right. and the title of the EP. Right. That's beautiful. You know what's up. Yeah, she look, yeah. He's Same paying regular. attention. I really, shit. I really do this. And I like, I genuinely was like, damn, like I cannot put out music yeah i wanted to i've been working on that project for like two years i think wow i was like i need to put this out like what's going on like but i was like hold up take a step back like mm-hmm. do you see what's happening right now yeah like so many people are dying yeah like how am i gonna act like this is okay right like i was like this is there was two pandemic pandemics At happening the same time right as there still is and there is yeah and that's why we take like hella precaution now but of like course. when i was putting out the single mercy it was during like you know like the middle of the coronavirus pandemic which is still happening but like that yeah. pandemic specifically i was like jesus like there's so many powerful people not speaking up about this shit mm. and it's like such a shame they have so much power and they're not using neglecting it, it. And neglecting people that support them like Mm -hmm. i'm talking about influencers no cap i'm talking about singers Mm -hmm. talking about political figures all of those people who were supposed to be doing their job Mm -hmm. holding a platform are not doing it so i was like i'm just gonna put this song out like i'm not gonna promote it like i usually do like Mm -hmm. i'm just gonna put this shit out and let it be like this Mm -hmm. is supposed to be like a healing experience through my Mm -hmm. music as well like something that's cathartic so yeah i was like i'm not gonna i'm that's what the song is about it's about like powerful people not standing up for the powerless. Mm. Period. Mm. And that and that led to. I love that though because you having that mindset and then taking the step to be able to do that. It led to you know today where we're at as August twenty second and three days ago you just put out your first project and right. it's the start of beautiful things. Right. Okay. That's great. You're amazing. This is actually our first official time meeting. Right. Which is nice though because I've actually had the pleasure of. Thinking now, right, correct me if I'm wrong, Kai, or whoever it may be, everybody that I've had thus far, I've had some personal um, connection with, so it's nice to have you on here. Cool. Um, we talked a, about a lot of good things, a lot of important things, understanding who you are as a person, neglecting who you are as an Aries. Your uh, your favorite color is now supposedly lavender. We'll double check with you in six months. We're going to go have a meal together, okay. right, understanding where Mercy is, the EP, um, and just ultimately what your inspiration is. You know what time that it is. That memory, though. Yeah, oh yeah, I'm out here. We don't play for this. And now you know what time it is, right? What? You don't know? You, you said you've watched one of my episodes before. I watched like the first 20 minutes. Okay, see, look, you should have skipped to the end. Um, does somebody want to tell her what time it is, Kai? You want to know? It's the hot seat time. What it's, does that mean? It's the hot seat time. It's what? It's like a 75 degrees. It's kind of nice out, but your seat's going to get kind of warm. Kai, I know you got the VHS. Can we, can we go get what we need for her, the gift that she doesn't want? It's in the uh, in front of the chair. It's in the LV bag, which sounds like a flex. Wait, but it's is my not. is my is your what? We're talking. You guys got it. I'm gonna sound like a dumbass. No, but is my ahead. chair gonna actually physically get hot? <laughs> <laughs> Kai, you heard it. 
<laughs> Look, no, this is, hey, this is, that. that's the promo for the episode right there. Listen, no, I'm going to be honest. Your so seat. All the good things I no, said. No, yeah. No. And he's going to use the one clip where I sound like a fucking dumbass. I, Listen, hey, it may not physically get hot, but it's going to feel like it because now I get to get all up in your business. Chill. And yeah, no, 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 no cap. And we don't know each other, so why this is great. Um, I get to ask some questions about you that otherwise your fan base or people that you wouldn't know wouldn't get to know because socially there's a certain image. Don't worry. I usually have dark, dark ass questions for people I know. I'm not going to do that to you. You're not going to do You found me. it, Kai. Thank you. So what we have here, as always, this is a reckless hype um, merchandise piece that I really I want. She's got a she's got a beautiful following. I want the people within your platform to be able to see this shirt on your back and be able to rock it. Okay. Pero, the only way that you get this is if you proceed to answer every single question. Yeah, and we got like six, so there is no pressure to get this. I just I don't know what to tell you. You don't even like gifts, so you may not fucking want to answer these to begin <laughs> with. But I suggest you take a sip. The seat, the seat might get physically hot, but I can't do that for you. So are we ready? Oh my god! Wait, hold on. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. You want to ask some questions? What is going on? Like what? Like what am I? Oh, are you confused? No, like I'm feeling nervous. Yeah, this is good. This is good. This is uh, live anticipation. No, basically it's it's me asking you. Am I gonna you, die? You're no, you're good. It's a series of questions. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I can assure you, four of them are at least. Very, very, uh, now all of them. I'm telling you, I did you so right. I I'm didn't just I let didn't you know you. if you say something and it like <laughs> rub it, rubs you the wrong way, you're gonna keep it a bean. Yeah, that's see, look, that's it. You can physically get up and stand, but I wouldn't do you like that. I feel good. Also, by the way, now we'll <laughs> tell him in a second. No, see, look, this is good. Her seat is already getting hot, unless you can tell. Are we ready? Yeah, let's get to it. Okay. You don't, don't be shy. You're in Aries, you guys aren't scared of shit. Shut the fuck you, you up. walk into the fire, it's all good. <laughs> Here we go. First question. You better be in the water. Let's do it. I'll start slow. I'll start slow. What's your What's your favorite album of all time? Jesus. Um. You're literally talking to a Libra moon. I'm so indecisive. I can't pick one thing for my. Uh, well, if you can't decide on this one, good luck with the rest of the questions. <laughs> um. Uh, my favorite album. Like what genre? Whatever. There's uh, no specific. Come on. Just pick one. Pick one from the genres and stand by it. <laughs> Woo! Elise! Angel. Thriller. Wow. No, Still wait, look. but that's not my favorite album. That's like one of the best albums I've ever heard. But yeah. like, it's not my. Kissland, Channel, Channel Orange. Channel Orange. Get busy, at least. Thank God that or you're Ultra here, Violet. or else she would have went like this. Channel Orange is beautiful. It's also my dad's favorite album. That's cute. That's beautiful. Yeah, my dad actually is crazy. He um, he liked Channel Orange so much that he didn't like Blonde. He thought it was a he thought it was a step back. Blonde was Meanwhile, so good too. <laughs> you sure about that? Yeah. Favorite song on Channel Orange? Um, Pink and Blue. No, that's on Blonde. What am I I'm talking? like, do you even channel. like Channel? Channel, channel. Like, sorry. I'm, I'm in the hot seat. Yeah, okay? see, look, you're feeling nervous. <laughs> I'm not that nervous. Yeah. Um, I like... Honestly, I'm going to just keep it real and say thinking about you because that shit got me yeah, up a lot. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to rock with pyramids, but I feel that. I was about to say pink pyramids. Pink matter. Did you mean pink matter when you said pink and white or pink I matter? think I was trying to say that, yeah, but... um. Matter. Definitely Pyramids a second. That's a beautiful choice. Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone? That is my favorite song. That's the song. one? Are you sure? You I'm change positive. Your mind again? Sierra, Le Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone. That's a beautiful choice. Great album. At least good job. Sierra Here we go. Second one. Here we go. Um, who? Oh, no. Let's, do, let's switch up a little bit. Describe your dating life in one word. One Stupid. word. Stupid. <laughs> um, Come on. Is that the word? Yeah. Stupid? Can we get a little elaboration? Why is it um, stupid? Well, right now I'm good. But because like I'm single, so yeah. I'm good right now. But like the relationships I've had in dating, like mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm trying to think that men just aren't it, you know? They're like, just not it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not. Especially cancer men. Yeah. So like, not it. But you, you seem like it's like by no means are you in the streets. <laughs> All right. Well, there's my answer. 
<laughs> Next question. Okay, I Next hate question. that. Hey, at least I suggested. I took the stance of like you're not. Hey, the streets are for some people. The streets are yeah, not for others. For other. some people, I agree. But I, like, it doesn't matter. Agree. Yeah, hey, it's the streets are like central, right? It's the road. That's what I tell people. It's do literally you the road. To the streets? Absolutely not. Now, do I cross? Do I walk across the street every now and then? But like, how do you physically like? Have you ever been to a stoplight? Have you been to a crossing light? You got to get from one side of the street to the other. Those people that just say they sit on that corner, you're a fucking liar. All right, next question. Next question, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do this. Uh, what is your favorite song in the album? Which album? Oh, the, my album. Your EP. My Sorry, <laughs> your EP, your EP. <laughs> <laughs> You're really good at this. <laughs> Thank you. I try. Uh, no, you are though. I'm not, I was being sarcastic, but he's really good at this. Um, you. I'm saying my probably my favorite is Lavender. Wow, it's definitely the one. It came out before the album, so I'm gonna let you let you get by because sometimes you had two singles. Right. But but singles are Three, definitely actually. important. Three. Who else came out? Lavender Mercy hit list. Hit list. Okay, yeah. Mine is for sure Dreamy. If you haven't done that, go do Dream. Lavender's my favorite, but Sim. I'm I'm not counting. Yeah. Cancer. Yeah. yeah. Hey. <laughs> what is what is uh what is lavender about? Um, lavender is about my life when I was like going through a lot of stupid shit. Like, okay, so I was doing like full time school, full time work, not full time work. Like, what school do you go to? I go to UC Berkeley right now, but I transferred there. Smart girl shit. Anybody can get into it. Like you Anybody can get into Berkeley? I mean, I don't know. What kind of dumbass statement is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, if you're watching this, apply yourself and you too can get into UC Berkeley. No, 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 that's not Fuck even what I'm saying. Here. I just think, like, it's an educational institution and it's all, like, sub subjective, like I said, like, about a lot of things. So it's either you're just what they're looking for at the moment or you're not. Like, it's not. Which is usually not. <laughs> okay, for me though, like I don't know, I transferred there, so it was a little bit easier to get in. I mean, brag on, brag on your intelligence though is what you should be doing. You know, there's obviously a side of you that is extremely in tune with what you feel from, and it's obvious if you have watched this episode at all, you see the uh, the intellectual side of what you know who you are as a person. But thank you, yeah, but whatever. Yeah, Berkeley's hella regular. Okay. No, no, no. Brain it's, like it's, Berkeley. It's, it's not. It's not regular. It's just like. It's a school, and it's a great it school. It is a school, and, and clearly we're not like, oh, we're going to school for the rest of our life. Yeah, you know? like, it's it's just a place for some people to be, like, if yeah. they want to study there. I stole a degree about two months ago, so. Stole? Stole as in, like, I finessed my way through four and a half years right. of, like, you know. That's what I'm doing. Good. Currently finessing. Yeah, Brain yeah. like Berkeley. It's like, uh, what do you call it? Um, fraud. Identity fraud. Pretending, oh, you like, you know, pretty much, right? Like, you're being somebody... Who you're not internally not, but you like being that person to get what you need. Interesting. In this case, it's legal to some Sounds extent. Manipulative. Sounds manipulative. Sounds wow. like a cancer. Crazy, crazy. Sounds funny. I do feel like too. Do we not have like the worst name? Like, why are we considered a cancer? Because that's what you are. <laughs> Every No, I'm, I'm chemotherapy, bitch. So <laughs> There's a difference. I'm here to heal. Look, Angels is, is shaking her head. All right, next question. How did I get on the fucking hot seat? This is ridiculous. That's what Aries did. All right, yeah, right? What is an acceptable amount of time to integrate physica physicality into a relationship? Do you guys like the way that was worded? That was good. I hated it. No, I'm just kidding. That's um, very good. I'll read it again for those of you that did think is it. What is an acceptable amount of time to integrate physicality in a relationship? You I know, think I'm, I'm whenever you it. fucking feel like it. Wow. Wait, so does that mean, does that Final mean? Applause. Yeah, okay, I'll clap for that because I'm a stand of that, you know. That's also the street mentality, so it is what it is. Um, that can go all I'm the way. On here look, again. look, look. That, no, you better prepare yourself because I know you now. Next time it's gonna get hella dark. I'm not coming uh, back. That, that can go. That can go from one night to one week to three months to 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 six months, mm. right? So, and I, but I agree though because it should be it should be mutual in that. No, sense. I just think that like sexuality and like embracing yourself, liberating yourself, however you want to say, it, like it's up to a per like just mind your business, let people do what they want to do. No kizzy. You know. No kizzy. Like I don't care. Yeah. At all. Like, yeah. just do whatever you want. Yeah, cool. That's one of those. <laughs> Free things. spirit. She definitely goes to Berkeley. <laughs> For sure. No, that's real. I love that. I love so that. So radical. Yeah, reckless. 
Um, dream feature. If you can get somebody on your song you would like die for, who would it be? Probably Lauren Hill right now. Is she she's alive. Yes, she's alive. She's alive. She's alive. Hey man, you can never check. There's my dumbass statement of the night. You want to use that for the promo? No. You not know it? Okay. That's disrespectful. I, it was a real question. Because when's the last time you heard a new Lauren Hill single? Okay, see, look, there's those of us that need take. Lauren Hill, I do think you're a queen. Absolutely. I can I can name a lot of her songs, but nothing that I've heard in the last decade. But that's that's a great choice. That's a, is You're there a, funny. Is there... <laughs> <laughs> you're really trying. <laughs> Hey, at least it's not boring. We're no, not, I know it's cool. We're not on NPR. Okay, the last question is very, it's very <laughs> slight. I need an in-depth analysis, right? If in fact you are going to go on a first date with somebody, would you rather get high with them or rather get drunk with them, and why? Um, um, probably neither. Okay, but that's like, that's like that's because like question, if you have though, to like put on like a like I feel like sometimes you do become like a when you're intoxicated, like you're not. Yourself, full self. Yeah, and I just. But wanna... some people look at it the opposite way. You know that, right? Right, but like for me, I want to be able to grasp you. Like I perfectly want to analyze who you are and mm -hmm. observe every part of you. Like sober first. Okay, I agree with that. Okay, but like, let's... I don't care. If, like, if you're if you're high, I don't give a fuck. Like, do it. No, no, no. Okay, okay. But then let me change the question just because that's like a half-assed answer. Um, if in fact you were to like be vibing with somebody, is there more vulnerability with being high or being drunk? Do you feel? Probably high. I agree, cause yeah, I be getting I high agree. people, and I'm like, yo, you're weird. Like, and that's dark. Dude, say though. I'm like, you're weird. They're like, uh, like say something fucking. Yeah, weird. I'm like, like, shut awkward. the fuck up. Like, you know, like I'm already weird in the moment, but like I'm keeping it together. You're fucking weird. And that's like that's funny, cause we're like as people like we're conscious of ourselves while we're yeah. like faded, cause it's like a little bit of a paranoia. Yeah. But like other people, it's because we see we're criticizing ourselves so much, so we're able to criticize the people even. More. You said it right there. I'm glad we're on the same page about that. Because if we're drunk, I can, like, focus on my energy and yours from a positive perspective. Right. Tequila is really good at that. But yeah. when we're high, like, if we don't really know each other like that, chances are I'm going to think that we'll never hang out again. Just right. Just because, you know, you're, yeah. you're weird. No, I feel that. Yeah. That's normal. Yeah. Do you have a question for me before we get out of here? Yeah. Um. <laughs> I got a few. You got a few? No. I Damn. Can't. I never offered this to you, so just know I fuck with you. <laughs> Thank God he fucks with me. Real shit. <laughs> it's really. <laughs> um, my question for you mm. is, what is your five-year plan? Wow. Like, what are you looking forward to in, like, the next five years? Like, I'm just kidding. Wow. I'll take his job. Yeah, clearly. No, <laughs> fuck, you're doing a great job. Except I'm you kidding. left. It's hard to leave me speechless. Um... My five-year plan, I think it, it, it is beautiful because Nick's here. He said, like, in terms of reckless, he was like, do you guys have a plan, right? Mm -hmm. And I, we have visions. We have things that were aspirations. But a plan, uh, let's, let's be real, like a sophisticated, whole, organized plan are benchmarks of things that you see fit for what you want to do. And when, in fact, that they don't occur, you have to reassess them. So in the same way for you with music, like, there's certain, obviously, you would love to be signed to Interscope. Right, that's a great thing, but there's a whole lot of things that need to happen prior to that, you know. Mm. So I'm gonna be honest, boo, it's a bad answer. I don't have a plan, right? But that's that's not a bad answer. That's not a bad answer, right? Because I'm hoping somebody that's watching this has the same answer and can relate to that. The difference is, and what we both need to do is create a plan, you know, because I think like having that plan, while it may be tentative, knowing that what you need to do to get there can lead you to where you're going yeah you I mean, know you should just i mean for me like when people ask me that question i'm just like no vision just moves mm. <laughs> i only see it as a joke but like is it though what i mean is like yeah you have like a goal to direct yourself but like you're gonna make it happen yeah just say that yeah because you i feel like you'll make it happen appreciate so you. just do your thing like you yeah. don't need to like come up with a plan for anybody like yeah. you're working for yourself so fuck everybody else yeah, no cap everybody yeah. round of applause yeah, for that yeah, one. There we go. Go. fuck everybody if there's fuck one everybody. thing you like fuck everybody that's what it is <laughs> no that's absolutely amazing i appreciate you understanding that um i've had so much fun I've had a great time. It's been dark at moments, but it's also no. Been it was very, like funny though. Yeah, it was. It's like it's satire. It's dark humor. If you right. don't like dark humor, then just cut this whole shit off. <laughs> but if you made it this far, you're at the end of the episode. You've been hanging with us for 55 minutes. Then you love dark humor. Um, 
first and foremost, I thank you before I thank anybody that's here because I really appreciate you trusting me to come through during a global pandemic and sit within, what is this, like 16 inches from me and trusting that I'm doing well with no symptoms. But you're absolutely amazing. I enjoy this. I'm a fan of your music first, which is why I was so excited to have you on. But just like everybody that's here and saw it, I'm really really enjoying the person i almost said in love with the person that's kind of sus um you know <laughs> i'm joking i love the person let Mango. me take a drink look look, look. You look, look, look. <laughs> let me take it no but seriously you're amazing and where you're going which your vision is the moves that you're gonna make i'm supporting it fully and just know you always have the reckless family to come back and see thank you and we're gonna go eat our dish um, before we get out of here, we want to shout out everybody. Kai is here every time. People don't understand. Like, we keep Woo! saying Kai. Yeah, we're going to clap for Kai. Get Kai's it, episode's it, coming it. soon. You know what time it is. We got Andrews and Elise in the building that pulled up to support Mango, and they gave us great vibes. You can't see Lawrence. He's, like, in the dark abyss back there, but he's there doing his thing. We things, see you. You know, and then, of course, we got we got America's greatest Aries of all time. There's Gerald Machiavelli, and we got Nick in the building. So, we've had a great time. We hope you enjoyed it with us. Um... I also want to say I've been fully in tune to what the hell has been going on in this episode, but I've been watching my phone. I just want to let you guys know the Lakers won tonight. So we're up two games to one um, on the Portland Trailblazers. So I'm going to get drunk tonight to celebrate that. I've had a lot of fun. You know what time it is. You're in a building with your boy Jiggy. Before you do anything, after you finish this episode, make sure you go stream Mercy the EP. When they're searching it up, what do they need to search your name is? You want to spell it? Rahma. R-E-H-M-A. Get busy. You know what time it is. Until next time. Cheers. Did she win? She won. Oh, Fuck, did it still run it? We're still on it. Okay, see, look, I almost said bye, but <laughs> she answered every question, right? Everybody accepts it. So we have to give this to you. This Thank is yours. You. It belongs to Woo! you. Look, she was all nervous about that, and she did it. She got the question. I almost wanted to give it to Elise because I thought she wasn't with the shit. But You're Elise, savage. anytime you borrow it, just know you can take it. Rock Thank it. You. That's what time it is. Thank you. For the second time, you know what time it is. You're in the middle with your boy, Jiggy. Thank you, Raymond, for being with here, and until next time. Cheese.